Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new here. If you are new, my name is Nikita from the Jarrett Family Official over on Instagram. So do go follow us on there as well. We do put more regular updates on there because it is a lot quicker to update on there. Um, today is just going to be an update on our surrogacy journey. Not an update, kind of like an overview. Uh, because we are on the 18th of May today and on the 27th of May will be a whole year since we started the surrogacy journey so just to mark the year of our journey and where we've come so far I'm going to do a massive overview just go through everything that we've been through so far in this year and just talk about where we are now and um, go into more detail of everything that went on so it is going to be kind of a longish video so you might want to put it on in the background while you're tidying up or grab a coffee because I'm going to be talking for quite a while but I've got a book here I have um, created like a little scrapbook of everything that's gone on so if you do see me looking down I'm just reading off of this because it's kind of hard to remember everything that went on in a year so we'll get started on this so like I say um, our surrogacy journey started on the 27th of May what happened was we let family know that we was going to like go ahead with surrogacy we wanted to let them know how we was going to have our child in the future and let them know of the situation so they knew what was going on so it wasn't a big shock to everyone so we let everyone know and on the 27th of may at 3 48 jen called us and said that she would carry our baby she offered to be our surrogate and it was an absolutely amazing moment. I will never forget that phone call. Um, I mean, that phone call has practically changed our lives forever now and that was the start of our journey. So it's a really special time. So that was our start of our journey to becoming parents, was that phone call. So then, obviously, we were all ready to go and we sent off for our tests. So when you start surrogacy, you need to do some tests to make sure you've not got any diseases or STIs or anything like that because you are going to be doing INSEMS. I mean, if you go through a clinic, it's obviously different because they might carry them out there. But we were doing home INSEMS, so we had to get the tests done ourselves. So we sent off for them and then we sent them back and we got the results back on the 16th of June, which was obviously all negative, except from one of Adam's. There's always one. Um, Adam had a problem, we had a problem getting blood out of Adam's finger. What it was is for the HIV test, the, I think the actual bit you needed to put the blood in, I think it was about this much blood you needed to put in, it was quite a bit. So we pricked Adam's finger and it healed so quick there was a tiny drop that came out and then nothing further would come out it just healed up so we went round to my mum's um, and she tried doing it she was squeezing his finger trying to get as much blood out as we can and um, again nothing was coming out so we got like this much not even that and we sent it off thinking we'll send it off see what they say it came back inconclusive which don't mean that obviously they couldn't, they couldn't decide whether it was negative or positive. It was just that they didn't have enough blood to give us an answer on that. They didn't have enough blood to test it. So we had to go to Boots. We had to go buy a private HIV test, which I aren't going to lie, was the most embarrassing moment I've probably had so far. Um, going to the counter with a HIV test, we did get so many looks. I mean... I get embarrassed about little things like that so even looking at the HIV test on the aisle were embarrassing to me but when we took it to the counter they did look at us a bit funny and um, just says oh do you know how to do it and we were like yeah we know we know what we're doing um, so we took it to the counter I think it was like 20 odd pounds to get the separate HIV test so we did that and obviously that came back negative as well so Apart from the little hiccup we had in between, we did get all the results back on the 16th of June. So that was all fine. And I forgot to mention before that, on the 8th of June, Jen had her coil removed. Because she had a coil in, she had it removed as soon as she could. Because obviously we know that when you have the coil removed, you don't just have regular cycles straight after it's removed. 
Uh, they do say that it can take three months more for your body to get into regular cycles again. So she had the coil removed on the 8th of June and then we went and bought everything that we needed to do with home incense. Um, I will put a picture up here. I think I put a video on about that. Um, so I put on all the equipment that we needed to buy and everything. So we got the ovulation tests, the pre-seed, the syringes, um, the pots and then the menstrual cup. Um, all of that we bought ready to do the incense. Now we just had to wait for Jen's cycle to come. And then we could start tracking the ovulation then. And then when she ovulated we could then start the incense as well. So fast forwarding on. 11 weeks and 3 days after she had the coil removed, so on the 27th of August um, we were all so excited because Jen started her first cycle that meant that once she came off her cycle we could start tracking ovulation and then start the incense it was so exciting because we knew that we could actually start trying um, yeah, it was a really exciting moment um, we were all excited that she'd started a cycle, probably more excited than what we should have been, but um, the ovulation app that she had predicted that she was going to ovulate between Monday the 7th and Sunday the 13th of September, and it said that the peak day will be Saturday the 12th of September, so we just needed to wait for the solid smiley. We got the clear blue digital ovulation tests, so what they do is they flash when a certain hormone is high and then when they go solid it means that your LH level is high. So we just needed to wait for the smiley to stay solid and then we could do the incense. Sounds very simple but the, the flashing smiley literally had our lives. Uh, we started getting a flashing smiley on the 4th of September this kept flashing until the 21st of September so we had a flashing smiley for quite a long time and waiting for that flashing smiley to go solid it seemed like we had that flashing smiley forever so it kept flashing we didn't get a solid so Jen just stopped doing them because obviously they're not they're not the cheapest of tests they're quite dear at the um, digital ovulation tests so the 4th till the 21st it was flashing. We did an insem on the 9th of September. We didn't do this because the um, LH levels were um, like peaked. We didn't do it because we got a solid smiley. We just did it because we thought we're getting a flashing smiley. Um, we'll do it just on the off chance that we've peaked in between, it was his first time, we thought we might as well give it a go, then when we do it properly we'll know what we're all doing, and um, it won't be as uncomfortable. So we did one on the 9th, the LH levels went to 20 odd, which was higher than what they had, the, what they had been, but there wasn't that high where you're supposed to ovulate, that there wasn't an ovulation level. So. We, put, we didn't. We obviously knew that this wasn't going to happen this cycle, but we did an insem, and obviously we did the test um, two weeks later, or just before two weeks later, and that came back negative, which we was all we was all expecting that anyway, because like I say, um, she didn't ovulate. We just got the flashing smiley, and now when we look back, we think that it was just kind of her body getting used to um, the regular cycles again. And then we had two more cycles after that where we had flashing smileys and it didn't go solid again. We didn't get a positive ovulation test for two cycles after that. On the 17th of January, we did get a positive ovulation test. Like, hallelujah. We got a positive ovulation test and the flashing smiley finally went solid it went solid which was an absolute miracle especially because all we was getting was flashing smileys constantly so she got a i'll just have a look so yes yeah, so on the 17th of january we got the positive ovulation test and we did incense on the 17th so the day of the positive ovulation test and the 18th the day after the positive ovulation test 
and we did it the day after as well because the levels were still really high but there was coming down but there was still high and when you do get a positive ovulation test you've got to remember that it doesn't mean that you're ovulating there and then that day it means that you're going to ovulate so many hours after that positive test so we did the day of the test the positive and the day after and then it was the two week wait which we had to wait and obviously see if the incense had worked this was our first proper month of doing incense with a positive ovulation and ovulation happening so the two week wait felt like forever we were all impatient we could not wait the full 14 days which i don't think anyone waits the, the full 14 days to be honest from what i've heard um and i don't blame them because it seems like absolutely forever it's only two weeks but um so we tested at 9 to 10 dpo so days past ovulation so we tested four days early on the 27th of january it was just a, we didn't test with the we got some first response tests um because we all know that they pick up the positive a lot earlier than any other test um but yeah we tested with a cheapie like a cheapie test just like them packs of 10 that you get for two quid or something like that um we tested with one of them on the 27th of january and we got a negative it was completely negative um we i put here that we didn't lose hope because we knew that the cheapy tests they took a lot longer to show a positive on there so we didn't lose hope on that and then we tested again two days later at 11 dpo and um, well jen tested um in the morning when she woke up we didn't know that she'd tested um first thing we got a call from her at about 6 45 a.m so it were about quarter to seven we were just waking up to get ready for work um this was on the 29th of january um and she said that there was a faint second line on the first response test that she'd done um literally that moment was surreal like I, w I was in a daze like for the rest of the day it was so surreal but she got the faintest second line on the test you could see it but it was very very thin it wasn't that pink um so but it was a second line it was a um, we were shocked, excited, nervous. There were so many emotions that went through like your mind at that time. Um, it didn't even feel real to be honest. It felt like it didn't even feel like it was happening. It took a long while for it to sink in. We was obviously really, really excited and glad that we got the um, second line. Yeah, we weren't expecting it to work first time either because like I say, it was the first time we'd done it since a positive ovulation test and we weren't expecting it to just work first time so that was a shock as well so now all we had to hope for was the second line the one that was positive line to get darker i'll put a picture up here of like how the second line was and as you can see it was very very thin um as we know unfortunately and now it, like we have had that positive test i do feel for people a lot more that do get that positive test and not that i feel for people a lot more it's that i understand a lot more because we've been in the situation ourselves now that we've got a faint second line i know what kind of feelings you go through when you do get that positive and as we know some people do have chemical pregnancies some people do have losses early on um where the line you get a faint positive and then it does like weaken off and disappear it just doesn't get darker um and now we're just i was like so worried that it was just going to disappear because i'd seen like so many stories where they'd got a positive and it had just gone so now we was just hoping that the the second line would get darker and the tests would be more positive every single day and the next test uh, we was going to test every other day like i say but jen did a test on 12 dpo the day after 
and it did say it was a digital clear blue and it did say that she was pregnant and it said one to two weeks so that was obviously a positive sign again you can still get pregnant signs on the digital blues when it's a chemical and still you can end up losing the line um afterwards so i was still very very nervous um really excited um really i don't think we could believe us luck because it had happened that quick i was thinking it's too good to be true we did a test on 13 dpo so two days after the 11 dpo and the second line was a, a lot darker than what it was and we started to get really excited obviously still hoping that the second line still got darker and then 15 dpo got darker again 17 dpo it got so much darker again i'll put a picture here i've got um, a picture of the tests so it's 11 13 15 and 17 dpo and as you can see the lines got darker and darker and darker at every time um we still like adam couldn't believe it and we were still thinking we want confirmation from like a doctor or something just to let us know that it definitely is real because it doesn't feel real when it actually happens it's like you think is this actually happening is this real um so yeah jen booked a um doctor's appointment for the 17th of february and uh, they gave us an estimated due date of the 7th of october so it was so nice to get that due date knowing that you know when baby's gonna come when the due now we were just needed to wait for the scan we was going to wait for the 12 week scan the nhs one but obviously covid hit i will talk about that we've got a few more things that happened before that but covid hit we didn't know whether we was going to be able to get into the scan so we did book an early scan but i'll talk more about that when we get to that bit so obviously after then we were so excited we couldn't wait to tell family that it had well close family that it had worked and jen was pregnant we really couldn't wait we ordered like my mum and um paul my stepdad and my dad and adam's mum and dad and brother we ordered all them like t-shirts um or a mug just saying hi granddad or hi grandma and granddad i have put a video on about that i've put the uh, like reactions video on as well if you want to check that out um so we did order all that stuff and it was due to come after the scan or was it a week before the scan anyway all the stuff came early which wasn't good for me because i was so impatient anyway couldn't wait to tell anyone and all the stuff came early so we had to tell people early when the stuff came because i just couldn't wait it was all there ready and yeah i couldn't wait to tell everyone so we told everyone the news um just like like i say very close family for now we told everyone the news everyone was so excited for us um just seeing people's reactions and like how happy they were the, the were for us it was just so nice with that day um again another day that i won't forget and we couldn't wait like i say to the 12 week scan and um, it was the nhs scan is the 12 week scan that you get in the uk we couldn't wait until then because we because we found out so early because we was testing straight after ovulation because we knew when ovulation was we knew when we did the incense so we knew when to test like naturally if you're just trying for a baby and you're not tracking everything sometimes you find out a lot later so you haven't got as long to wait but we practically had the full 12 weeks like to wait so and plus of course because of covid it got to a point where you wasn't allowed anyone into the scan with you in the hospitals so i went emailing around every single scan company asking if we could all go in due to the situation with it being a surrogacy pregnancy and one place did get back to us and said that all three of us could go in which was absolutely amazing so we booked that for the 27th of february 
um, and that was the eight week scan baby was eight weeks at that point so we had the scan on the 27th of february but it's so like funny to say this now because we've obviously had more scans since but at the time baby was like a little blob like on the screen <laughs> obviously like i could see you could see the head and the body but it was like a tiny little blob and didn't have no movements whatsoever and now like she's just flipping around all over the place and kicking and everything else but back then at the time it's like the most amazing scan ever and you don't think that it can get better and then as you get as you have more scans you think you're just more amazed every time you see them and how much they've grown and how much they're moving and everything like that it's just it's it's amazing but yeah she were a little blob we didn't know she were a she at this point but baby was a little blob about this big i'll put a picture up there um and she just stayed a little still she had a little um yolk sack right next to her head um and we heard the heartbeat which was absolutely amazing and so reassuring as soon as she did put the scan on there she did say straight away that she could see the heartbeat flickering so that was absolutely um amazing that she did that it was so reassuring that she said that straight away so yeah the eight week scan was it was like the first scan the first time we got to see that baby were in there Um again it was so surreal that it had actually happened in the first place like first time next we went to the 12 week scan and that was on the 26th of march we went to the 12 week scan uh, we couldn't believe how much baby was moving like compared to the eight week scan it's only four weeks but there was a clear head nose and um, a little bump where the nose was I'll, I'll put the scan picture there you can see the bump where the nose is and the mouth and then like you can see the separate parts of the body and the legs going up and then she was um flipping round like this way one minute we could see her face like staring straight at the um the machine that the scan you with and then back round so we could see the back of her head um her little legs were like pushing out and coming back in here we're on rail it were absolutely amazing um just to see how much that that they'd grown it from the eight week scan and it was only four weeks so to break up the scan um so we had the 12 week scan obviously the next one that you get on the nhs in the uk is a 20 week scan obviously we couldn't wait eight weeks so we booked in a gender scan this was um 16 weeks so the last one was the 12 week we booked one in at 16 weeks and it was a gender scan so they could tell us the gender we couldn't wait until the 20 week scan to find out and also eight weeks is a long time to wait in between scans so we booked that on the 24th of april and we went for the gender scan and um, again it was so nice to see how much baby had grown just to see the little fingers this time um we could see separate fingers um the legs and everything looked a lot more chunkier than before uh she also put it in 3d or 4d and we could see like a little alien baby like at the head and then really really small top half and the big belly um i'll put a little picture of the 3d one there and she it took a while for her to find out the gender because she had her like knees up to her belly and then her feet up to her bum so she was all curled up and obviously her feet was covering her bum so we couldn't see that end to see the gender so it did take her a while but after a bit she did say that she had like um three or four looks and she could positively say that it was a girl which we was very shocked like very shocked we all thought it was a boy i'm not even sure why we all thought it was a boy but we all thought it was a boy and the week before we went for the scan all we'd been doing was thinking of boy names i'm not even sure why we were all convinced it were a boy but we were um so we were all thinking of boy names and 
yeah, we went in and she says, oh, what was you all thinking? What did you all think it was? And we says, oh, I think it's a boy. And she's like, no, it's a girl. And we were just so shocked. To be fair, it was a very, very nice surprise because we were expecting her to say boy. So when she said girl, it was, it was a surprise to us all. So that was the gender scan at 16 weeks. So then after we had the gender scan, we went back to Jen's and Adam bought like a little football with loads of powder in it and we filled that up with the pink powder got everyone on zoom because we couldn't meet because of covid and obviously i kicked the football and all the pink powder came out i'll put a picture of that here i did take like a little picture um so everyone was so pleased to find out we was having a girl they'd have been pleased either way but um yeah we'd let everyone know that we was having a girl so that was really nice. We've got a cannon as well for the kids to, like you twist it and the confetti comes out of the top. So that were really nice for them to do that as well. So after we did the little gender reveal, um, we then obviously now got to wait four weeks um, for the 20 week scan, because that one was the 16 weeks. And now is the 18th of May. So it's absolutely flown by to be honest. So we have got the 20 week scan next Wednesday, which is so exciting again. It's absolutely flown by because when we had the 16 week scan, we obviously thought um, four weeks is a long time to wait till the next one, but it has flown by. It's gone so quick. So we've got the 20 week scan next week. So I will be putting obviously the update on there. Um, the 20 week scan is kind of obviously the most important scan because it's the anatomy scan so they check all the organs and everything just to make sure everything's functioning properly and everything's okay in there so i can't wait for that one um and at 18 weeks and three days jen fell baby kicking for the first time so she it was after she ate a hot dog um <laughs> and she felt a kicking so it's really reassuring it's kind of bittersweet especially with surrogacy because it's reassuring that she can feel a kick in, but on the other hand, you wish that you could feel it as well. So it is kind of a bittersweet moment, but more good, more good than and positive than anything else, because you can, she can feel a kick in now, which is, like I say, really reassuring. You know that everything's still okay in there, and she's okay. So that was at 18 weeks and three days. She felt the first kick, and we know that 18, 18 weeks. Um, you can the baby can hear noises outside the womb so we bought some belly buds i'll put a picture up here if you've not heard them before the like little suction um, little sticky pads that stick to your belly when you're pregnant so we've been reading some books and sending them through on the phone for jen and then she's been playing them and they go through obviously the wire into the belly buds that you put on your belly and they play the noises into the womb for baby so we thought that would be a really good idea just because obviously we're not talking around her all, all the time and we're not around there and she can't hear our voice. So we thought that would be a nice little touch so then she can get used to our voice maybe. Um, I mean, if it doesn't work, it doesn't. But I, I like it as well. I like the feeling like knowing that she can hear us reading to her and stuff. It's nice. So that's it for the updates. That's where we are at the moment. Like I say, we've got the 20 week scan on the 26th of May. So that's the important scan. We hope that everything's, we've got no doubts, but we hope that everything's gonna be okay on there. So I'll update you all next week on how the scan went, what they said about anything, any new pictures that we get. Hopefully we'll get a lot of new scan pictures and we'll be able to see baby again, which is always good. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's not been too long and chatty because it has been a bit of a boring video but I just thought I'd celebrate the year that we've um, been in our surrogacy journey and just catch up on what we've been through and when you look back, I mean, it's like crazy to think that nearly a year ago Jen called us and we were doing the tests and things. I mean, it doesn't seem like two minutes ago to be honest. It's absolutely flown by so... Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you are new, please subscribe. Um, we're up to 70 subscribers now, so we only need 30 more, then we can get to the 100 mark. So that would be absolutely lovely. 
So if you make sure you subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.